This is Tim Barnhart, the owner of Legacy 420, one of the first indigenous medical marijuana dispensaries in Canada. Legacy 420 is located in Tyndanaga Mohawk Territory and has been open since December of 2014. 2017 is promising to be an epic year for Barnhart as Legacy 420 is undergoing a major expansion. Here he is to tell us more. I, mean, I got like a half a million in there. This already. So tell me about this place. Um, it is going to be the new Legacy 420 headquarters and dispensary. But from here, we've got enough room in the back to start storing large volume. So it's uh, 7,500 square feet, two levels. Um, let's have a look, let's see what we've got here. Barnhart has big plans and a vision for how medical cannabis production can benefit indigenous people and their Canadian counterparts. As the Canadian government moves towards legalization, Barnhart is determined that indigenous people will not be left behind. For him, that means the development of a comprehensive and multifaceted indigenous medical cannabis industry. For, uh, there's a um, uh, security apartment going upstairs. Down below is going to be a classroom so we can start teaching. Right. And then over here is going to be another uh, area where boardroom, office, in the back too. Upstairs is a third office. In mm -hmm. another area, we can start training people, get some classes going. There's going to be our dispensary. Um, and your glass. All your glass will be in here. I'm envisioning native art all along the walls. So we can start showcasing other people's work. Right. Here's where we originally planned on growing. Was in this spot here, 80 feet by 40 feet. Terry's got a kitchen to make his oil and his shatter, and there's going to be a kitchen for Matt to start baking his goodies right in house. Um, over there, we're undecided yet. We we're going to have a clone room over there. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a tax free product, an indigenous product that's um, organic. I mean, that's a pretty high bar to set, Tom. Um, so, I think we've got the space here. There's two greenhouses going out the back. Probably, as soon as that roof is done, there's guys coming in to start putting up two greenhouses. So, we've got two kilometers of property here that goes all the way to the back, to the, um, the beach road. So, uh, is, is there any waterfront on there? Yeah, there is actually. We can actually have, uh, I bought one of those six wheel jobbies so that we can start coming in through the back. So we're thinking tourism in the back. Run people off, mm -hmm. off where the beach is, come in through the back, have cottages in the back with marijuana growing right straight through, and have like 10 cottages back there where people can come and live right in the marijuana if they like. And so um, we got lots of room to grow here. Um, I did purchase another 116 acres of land in Desert Run on the reserve. And I talked to the lady, uh, and she goes, well, I know what you do for a living, she says. And she goes, I don't have anything against it, but there's a lot of rumors going around, she says. I go, well, how can I appease your fears? And she goes, well, what is it that you're growing? And I said, it's medical marijuana. And she goes, oh, okay. She goes, well, that don't seem too bad. She says, I've got cornfield, she says, from Highway 2 to the Slash Road. She said, that would be perfect for that, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, it would be. So I got to go uh, in on Wednesday and sign the deal. And, and so this spring, we're putting a fence like this around 10 acre plot. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start growing over there too. So yeah, I'm excited. Right. Take us over to the fence. That's where I want to take it. It's all right straight over to the fence. We're going to need all this area. And then we got more over this way. We 
You got staff parking lot all across here. And who do you have uh, building this for you? I've got John Sack, local builder. Um, and pretty much 99.9% uh, .9 of the guys are all indigenous. They're all from the reserve, which was part of, you know, no offense, but just it has to be, they have to be people from the reserve. Because it's it's all about gro local growth. Mm -hmm. Like I've had contractors stopping in from Dawa, hey, 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 need somebody to put that roof on? I do, but I don't, you know what I mean? I just, had they been Aboriginal, I would have said, yeah, go give us a price. But so far I've been pretty lucky. Everybody's been native here, so. Mm -hmm. It's helping that world go around, our, our world anyways. Well, I'll show you the back, huh? <laughs> Not much to see, but there's a, we built a road a half a kilometer into the woods. And put uh, 500 plants in this year. Actually, a thousand. We had 500 cut down. So we put in five more hundred, and we got two of these full. What, so are, what are these? Can shipping containers mm -hmm. full of marijuana. So, here's where our greenhouses are going. This fence is coming down in, in the spring, and we're just heading that way. Just straight to the back, two kilometers. That road, the boys have been cutting the, the lumber now, getting it ready. We gotta take all these trees out, because the sun, when it comes down, it'll shade up the greenhouses. So, we got a little a bit of work to do yet, but it's coming along. When, when did you break ground with starting this? April. Actually, no, uh, June. We started the road in April to get us to the back. We, re we re literally went through the swamp, built our own road by hand, cutting trees down, using them to drive over until we could have the money to afford to put a real road in. So we had a quasi road going up there. But here's the thing, Tom. We got the crop in by May 24th long weekend. So that crop paid for that road and this building. And now the police can't say you're using organized crime to enrich yourselves. No, we're using our own. This is mm -hmm. our marijuana that we grew with our own hands and with our soil. So you can't say that. You know, they might be saying that in Belleville, Toronto, and Vancouver, but we don't need it, Tom. There's too many of us, too much knowledge and too much ambition, you know? Yeah. So that's how I feel about that. 